leading right from from what you just said um you know people telling you that you can't do it and everything and, and i know i i heard this on some of your other podcasts like jason terry was a big role model for yourself and and your mom as well to you know rise above that and so i know role models are important but were there any other ways like sort of on a specific level right that you were able to block out that negativity or hear it and rise above it like for our listeners who might be dealing with like similar things people telling them they can't do it is there anything that you think of in your mind back to that time like specific strategies you sort of employed to sort of like get through that period because I can't imagine that was easy and that you just got through it sort of you know Mm non-intentionally yeah um for me I don't know about strategies but I just love um it's like everything that I did I watched it like all 24 7 I practiced with my mom all the time I played it like I just loved it so much and it was like one of those things that I like I was really passionate about as a kid um, and so I knew, like, I wasn't going to give that up um, just because some people um, were, like, being negative. But, like, for me also, like, I was going to show them, like, I'm going to prove it to them that they're wrong. And right. That's, like, the competitive side of me, like, showing them that they don't know what they're talking about and just continuing to push for my dreams and what I'm really passionate about. Yes. And so that brings up an interesting point, Natalie. Like, I, I think I've even asked one of my previous guests about this, like, you know, Kobe, MJ did things like that, like turning, you know, criticism into fuel and motivation. Like, do you think, because sometimes I wonder, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, like, man, I don't know if I want to be motivated for those reasons. But there's sort of like an irresistible, you know, real strength out of that, that can really, like, in your case, it seems like really motivate people to achieve great things. Like, what are your thoughts on using criticism sort of as a motivator? Um, Yeah. It's like, I mean, I do get my motivation from so many different things, but definitely criticism, um, just like to prove people wrong. That's like the most, like the best. Like when you are able to like look back and be like, hmm, like you're wrong. And like y'all doubt, everyone doubted me and stuff. Like that's the best. Um, just right. being able- and then, yeah, I, I love criticism as a motivation. As a motivation. Yeah. And, and I think you can kind of look at it as like, it's, you're, you're proving people wrong, but it's, it's more like also you're proving to yourself, you know, things, right. And just viewing it as a positive of like, I'm gonna let these people's criticism motivate me, but it's not like I'm there. They're like taking up all this headspace in me, right? Like, I'm sure that's not the case for you. Like, you're not worried about these detractors, but you're saying, okay, they said something like, let me fuel, like, let that fuel me to achieve great things for me, not for anybody else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can tell I'm a psychology major, so I love this kind of stuff, but (laughs) yeah, great. So one more mental question. I have another mental question for you, like sort of your approach, Um, right? So we talked about this. You're, you know, one of, if not the only Asian American females to be playing at like your level in the college, in the college game, Um, right? So, and you're blazing a trail nobody else has taken before. Um, And you've also... For the listeners, Natalie's been very outspoken about trying to be um, an inspiration to to younger Asian kids, both boys and girls, right? So, I feel like there's always a spotlight on you for that reason, right? And you and you kind of brought it up on yourself because you want to inspire others. Um, do you ever have moments where you want to take your yourself out of that spotlight and you think, you know, I wish I wasn't the only one doing this, and I wish this wasn't, you know, something I have to carry all the time. Um, mm-hmm. And do you ever feel like it's added stress and pressure on your performances? Like, I know you said on like one of the Asian heritage nights, you were super nervous about that night because you don't want to disappoint people. Like, and if so, like, how do you respond in that moment? How do you keep yourself going and carrying this, you know, it's not a burden, but just this, this weight that's on you and, but you're using it to inspire others. Does that make sense? That question? Yeah. So yeah, two um, examples came up and you had kind of, referred to one of them so yeah um when there was a, like when we were allowed to play in front of a crowd and before COVID um that one season um UCLA the women's program had like and it's never happened to me like a program's never done that for me like an API heritage game and so that meant a lot to me um and so in the LA area there's just a, a huge Asian American community and so they um the like staff like everyone invited like all these little kids who play basketball um from, like the asian community like everyone we had a like little asian girl singing the national anthem 
um, in the uh, halftime show, we had like an Asian dance group. And that just meant so much to me because I, like no one's ever done that, done that for me. Um, so yeah, I was really nervous when I was warming up um, and just seeing like all the Asian kids coming in. Like I got really nervous. I like started shaking like, and then like uh, when we were warming up and then like I had to go over to my, I think my assistant coach. I was like, can you please play for me? Like, I don't, I'm just being, I'm like, I sometimes deal with like anxiety and stuff, but this was like a really prime time. And I was like, can you just pray for me? Um, I'm just like feeling really anxious. I definitely don't want to let all these people down. Um, I just want to be a great example and a great representation for all of them. And so we prayed and I just felt a lot better. And then they told me like, they, they already like, they're not, you don't need to prove anything else. Mm. You know, watch and enjoy and just relax. And that's like, so that was really helpful. Um, so that, yeah, that was one example where I was a little, I got a little anxious, um, but um, but I think I did play well that game. So I'm really happy about that. Um, and then, so another example um, would be like a couple of months ago um, before March Madness, um, when, um, so over like the past couple, the past two years, I've been kind of, um, like outspoken about um, what's going on in my community um, regarding racism and like the rhetoric used to describe COVID-19. Um, yep. Yeah, I like, so um, it kind of died down. And then um, right before March Madness this past season, um, there was like a huge increase in, rate, um, in hate crimes towards Asian Americans all across the country and also the world. Um, and then uh, I've got a lot of like DMs and messages asking like, why aren't you speaking up about this? Cause I mm. had four um, and I was just like, I got really stressed. I was like, I can't like, cause I was like in the middle of finals, we were preparing for March Madness. And then I was like really worried about my family and also my community. And then I had a lot of messages like, you spoke about, about it before, why aren't you speaking up about it now? Like, it's kind of disappointing that you're not speaking out. And like, I really felt like I was, the only one speaking up about it and why are people expecting me to um, so I did feel a lot of pressure about that but I did talk to um, my assistant coach coach Tasha um, she's very passionate about this kind of stuff so she definitely helped me through that right mm -hmm. right so it sounds like you know firstly you were just kind of remembering that right like the fans weren't there for that night specifically it's not like you had to prove something to them it's like you you've already you're there and that's what matters right and just sort of remembering that i think is is really powerful and then yeah it sounds like you had so much going on in your life personally right and then you were like people were asking you to sort of advocate for others out there so it's like kind of tough to balance both those things but i'm glad you have that support system and yeah i was just interested to see you know sort of how that approach what approach you take to that stuff so thanks for sharing that 